Gorgura is cute, but she's also a shark and sharks kill people. Say you're stranded on an island and you come across a wild starving Gura who couldn't for the life of her find any food until she saw you, a delicious looking walking meat sack. Her predatory instincts take over and she jumps at her prey. Gura is small, but small enough for you to fend off a shark attack. Hi, I'm Thyme and I'm asking all the important questions. Before we figure out your survival odds, we need to figure out just who or what is a Gorgura and is she dangerous. Here is a wild Gura in action. Little is known about this creature, in fact, she is the only one of her kind to have ever been documented. Sort of. Gura is an English VTuber who does variety streams on YouTube, mainly Let's Plays. And if it isn't obvious already, she's an anthropomorphic shark. What kind of shark? Well, what species of shark is Gura? Does she know? Do you know? I'm just going to ask her directly. Do you think that's rude to ask? What species are you? Actually, what kind of shark are you? Oh boy, is it time to sleep? I think it's uh, time to sleep. <laughs> we don't know, or she won't tell us. But there are some clues we can go off of. For one, she is very blue, so she might be a great blue shark. They are countershaded, and they tend to be very light. But a blue shark's teeth have very apparent curvature. Guras don't. And we don't know if the blue hoodie is actually taken from her shark form or is just additional attire. A more obvious choice would be the great white. A great white shark's teeth are large and triangular, like the ones Gura have. They are very territorial creatures. And they also kind of look <laughs> like her, at least compared to the other sharks. But great whites are huge. A female white shark averages at around 4.6 to 4.9 meters, with the largest ones reaching over 6. Gura, on the other hand, is 141 centimeters. It's not impossible. The smallest free-swimming white shark ever recorded is this guy from the Auckland Museum. His name is Rehutai and he is 105 centimeters in length. That's still pretty big for an outlier. In retrospect, there are over 500 species of sharks, ranging from the largest whale shark that can grow up to 18 meters to the smallest dwarf lantern shark, measuring a maximum of 21.2 centimeters. Although Gura has explicitly stated she isn't one. I am not a dwarf shark, I am a Gura shark. How many times In the 2005 edition of Sharks of the World, the average length of a shark is said to be around 127 centimeters. So if the data hasn't changed that much, Gura is actually considered taller than average for a shark. Not as tall as the average great white though. There is, however, a smaller species that might fit the bill. I I don't know, but I just I my favorite shark is a salmon shark. Salmon sharks oh, are like baby great whites. They're super cute. She actually has a point. Salmon sharks have a short, compressed body and are often mistaken for great white sharks. Their color ranges from dark bluish to medium gray. Their eyes are situated forward, allowing for binocular vision. They have moderately large, blade-like teeth. They're usually 190 to 240 centimeters on average, not that far off, especially considering Gura might not be fully grown yet. They also like to eat salmon, hence the name. Yay, salmon! Yahoo! Salmon sharks seems like a safe bet, but it's still difficult to tell for sure since Gura isn't in her shark form anymore. She doesn't appear to have gills and exhibits a lot of human-like behaviors. Maybe knowing where she comes from might help. I keep referencing land and all that. I am from Atlantis, the lost city of Atlantis. I'm pretty sure humans have heard of it. It's been a while since I've been there, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was all right, I guess. Gura claims to be a descendant of the lost city of Atlantis, but nobody knows where that is exactly. Atlantis was a mythical island first mentioned by Greek philosopher Plato in one of his stories. 
It was a utopia of sorts that had a falling out with the DTs and then subsequently sunk into the ocean. Now that a former Atlantean is here in the flesh, it's not really a myth anymore. There have been many speculations as to where this home of Guras is, if it still even exists, that is. It could be here, here, or even here. Most of these speculations, though, are somewhere in the Mediterranean Sea, usually in or around Greece, where Plato's story took place. That or in the Gibraltar area towards the Atlantic Ocean. Wherever it is, we haven't seen any indication of it on the surface, so I'd guess it actually sunk. That means Gura's family and friends are either mostly deceased or are hidden really well, either through supernatural means or by being deep underwater, a place we know practically nothing about. But there's another problem. If Gura is a salmon shark, she's native to the North Pacific Ocean, and nobody seems to think that's where Atlantis is. Or is it? 16th century historian Pedro de Gamboa in his book stated that Atlantis must have stretched from within two leagues of the Strait of Gibraltar, westwards to include all the land there. This corroborates earlier theories from two Spanish historians that stated that the land Columbus discovered 60 years prior was the Atlantic island of Plato. So, in other words, you guessed it, Gura's home, the lost city of Atlantis, doesn't look like this, it looks like this. <laughs> Actually, it's almost the entire continent, but since salmon sharks are found in the north, it's probably either Canada or the US. And considering Gura's okay, accent, yeah, take, it kinda take makes bread, sense. Right? Take your mayonnaise, get the mayonnaise out, get the tater chips, right? Get them Lay's tater chips, only the salt. You can do salt and vinegar, but I'd prefer if you did just plain old salt. It's probably somewhere here then. Incidentally, salmon sharks have this weird thing where the west part of the North Pacific is dominated by the males and the east by the females, so Gura might have come from a matriarchy. Also, Gura oh, is question. super old. 4,295 years old. Wait, no I'm not. I'm 9,495 years old. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm 9,000. I'm not that young. 9,485. 9,361, 9,927,9,655, 9,492. It's always different and it always will be. According to Plato, Atlantis sunk around 9600 BC, which means Gura was born almost 3,000 years after it sunk. Her shark mom and dad, though, might have been around back when Atlantis was still above water, assuming they have the same life expectancy. Speaking of life expectancy, 9,000 years is long. By comparison, the oldest shark in the world is the Greenland shark, who's lived at least 250 years and is estimated to live until past 500. This is the longest known lifespan of any vertebrate species in the world. Female salmon sharks only live to at least 20 years, maturing at around 8 to 10 years. This means if Gura is as old as she looks, she'll probably last another 9,000 years at least. But time, we haven't gotten to how dangerous she is yet. Before I get to that, I humbly invite you to click the like button. It helps me a lot. I plan on doing more videos like this in the future, so feel free to subscribe if you're interested in more stuff like this. Also, stick around till the end of the video for more facts about Gura. Okay, back to the question in the title. Salmon sharks aren't that dangerous. Sharks in general aren't that dangerous. You've probably heard, but you're 47 times more likely to die from a lightning strike than a shark attack, and 3,300 times more likely to die of drowning. In 2021, the ISAF documented only 137 instances of shark attacks. 
of which 73 are unprovoked. This survey is a bit biased, but it does give you a general idea of how chill sharks are compared to other animals. They just mind their own business most of the time, and they only bite when really agitated or they want to identify something, otherwise called a test bite. Of the hundreds of sharks, only about a dozen have been involved in these attacks, none of which are salmon sharks. But I still wouldn't go out of my way to piss one off. So, everyone, what a how do we feel now? Now I'm listening to Buddha. Piss off! Not listening to Buddha. That's alright. That's fine. Guru will remember this. They still attack you if they're really hungry or angry, in which case a shark's greatest weapons are its bite and agility. Let's look at the bite first. Gura's teeth are one of the few things that stay true to her original form. They're all pointed and there are probably a few more rows of it that we can't see. This means, despite being in this form, Gura's diet is still primarily carnivorous. There's also a chance she still has the bite strength of a regular shark. A great white shark can deliver bites up to 18,000 newtons, which is about the weight of four grand pianos, but it's mostly because of their size. If you look at their bite force quotient, which is a measurement of an animal's bite force in comparison to its body mass, great whites have a BFQ of 164 which isn't that high compared to 181 for a Tasmanian devil or 440 for a Nile crocodile. If we assume Gura weighs about 55 kilograms, having a great white's BFQ of 164 means she actually only has a bite force of 1066 newtons, which is about the average force for a human bite. Even using simple interpolation, assuming the average great white weighs 810 kilograms, she'd only have a bite force of 1,111 newtons, which is still within average range. Thus, if Gura bites you, it'll probably feel like a normal human bite apart from it being sharp. Even so, her teeth are smaller than a salmon or white shark's and they'd be roughly the same hardness as human teeth. In fact, shark teeth are attached to the jaw via soft tissue instead of roots like humans. This is because, unlike ours, shark teeth are designed to be detachable and replaceable. So if Gura bites you too hard or if you can get her to bite something else first, you can detach some of her teeth to lessen subsequent bites. Her mouth is also pretty small, and she lacks the jaw strength to pull a good chunk of flesh out of you. It'd still hurt, but you probably won't lose a limb. Next is the agility. Gura is small and nimble, and lacks unnecessary weight to slow her down. But that also means she'd have a harder time overpowering you through sheer momentum and body weight. Her best strategy is to probably bite quickly and frequently, so as long as you can somehow avoid her mouth, you can easily withstand her. Sharks are one of the few animals whose skeletons are made entirely of cartilage. If Gura's skeletal structure stays true to her shark form, like her teeth, she'd literally be boneless. Cartilage is a resilient connective tissue that acts like a soft bone. You can find it in your ear and in your nose. Sharks are made of cartilage instead of bone to make them lighter and more flexible underwater. Gura might make use of this when attacking in water, especially if she can still move her tail, but on land, cartilage would not be able to support her body weight and she'd just slump on the ground. Even if it's bone and not cartilage, Gura's agility is now limited to her parkour skills and physical prowess, which isn't really top of the class. Sorry, Gura. Let's keep going. Oh, please. Please have mercy on me. Another thing that sharks have is amazing night vision because of the abundance of rod cells in their eye that measure brightness. So in the real world, Gura wouldn't be handicapped by the dark. But you can try to 
shine something bright directly at her to throw her off since she's sensitive to light. Sharks are also colorblind. This is still in discussion, but presumably sharks have very few to no cone cells that enable them to distinguish colors, because there don't tend to be a lot of colors in the bottom of the ocean anyway. Gura might actually see the world around her like this, so it might be easier to hide from her in certain environments or simply stop moving. I think that's enough evidence to say that cute and sweet Gura is not deadly Gura. She might throw tantrums, but in the event that she deliberately tries to eat you, you can ward her off as you would a human child. Avoid her teeth and you'll be fine. The only thing is it'd be a bit hard to break her bones since she doesn't have any. Cartilage can absorb more impact, so blunt force trauma against her might not be as effective. It's all theoretical, of course. Priests protect her at all costs. Oh, and she does carry around a trident, though, so get your anti polearm defense scratch ready and maybe prepare to get shanked. Conclusion just don't piss her off and she'll mind her own business. Before we finish, here's more about Gura. Salmon sharks are possibly the most warm-blooded shark, and they can actively regulate their body temperature. Meaning, even back when Gura was still in the ocean, she would have maintained her temperature at around 25 degrees Celsius. If you touch her now, she'd be colder than a human, but not as cold as fish. Salmon sharks are ovoviviparous, meaning Gura was born from an egg, but the egg was kept inside her mom's tummy until it hatched, and then she was let out to the open sea. Shark skin is covered by dermal denticles. They're like scales made of small teeth. It decreases drag and turbulence, but practically useless above water. If Gura skin is still shark skin, it'd feel like sandpaper. One last thing, that bite mark in Gura's tail, it could be from a scuffle with other sharks, or it could also be from something else that might be a bit too explicit for me to mention in this video. Feel free to look up tail scars on female sharks on your own and let me know what you find. Gura herself has stated that she doesn't remember where the bite came from, but like the stitching was from being hit by a rock. Scratches on me are a bit blurry, but I do remember that I got stuck in a ravine. Uh, I got stuck in a, a deep sea trench or a ravine and I could, couldn't get out and I, uh, I had a rock fall on my, on my tail and, and I had to wiggle really hard to get out. So I think that's how I got the stitches. Uh, I don't really remember the bite mark though, unfortunately. But that's how I got the stitches. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I don't know. It's all kind of blurry. <laughs> anyway, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Gura is one of my favorite VTubers and do support her. This has been a really fun video to make. It's all dumb speculation. Please don't take any of it too seriously. Alright, see you guys in the next video. Bye.